praise God. It's so good to be here. Praise the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. There's a freedom here. Praise God. Amen. How many of you enjoy the freedom of the Holy Ghost? What it does. Praise God in us. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if you would turn in your Bibles here, we're going to Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, verse 11. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, verse 11. It says, The voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first saith the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We praise you, Lord God, for your goodness. Oh, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would do, Lord God. Hallelujah, only you can do. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Lord, for your presence. Lord Jesus, open up our hearts and our minds here today. Lord God, let there be something, Lord God, that resonates in this. Lord God, the Scripture. Lord God, in us. Lord God, we give you praise and we give you glory. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. I want to minister to you here, uh, uh, well, going into the afternoon here shortly. Jeremiah talks about something here and he calls it, and that's my title, The Voice of Joy. Amen. The Voice of Joy. And I, uh, I have another scripture here that in Psalms 51, verse 12, maybe a few verses. And restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Okay. Then will I teach transgressors <clears throat> thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, and thou God of my salvation. And, uh, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Yes. Oh, do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Oh, hallelujah. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and a whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. This is prophetic. And so is also Jeremiah. I uh, uh, just want to, you know, for us to get something here, and I, and I hope it it, it it grabs a hold of you. But the 
voice of joy. The voice of joy. What is the voice of joy? And the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom. Hmm. And the voice of the bride. Ah. And the voice of them that say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Wow. That's one of the main songs that they would sing. Actually, there is, um, we have an indication of it when Jehoshaphat set out the choir in the Lord and they sang the song. Uh, we know it in the scripture as just by its title, is mercy endureth forever. Okay. And um, this is an indication of what that song was and some of the more wording of the song. But the thing is, these, these are, you know, praises and the voice of joy. Now, many have ever been, you know, to the hospital and, you know, a relative, friend, you know, maybe, uh, you know, wife, all this. And there's a healthy baby born. Mama's good, everything's good. Okay. What's your reaction to all that? Now some of you say, well, I just waited 31 hours, I'm hungry, you know. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> okay. What it is about that healthy baby and all that, there's there's something, you know, I've heard people say, you know, you know, you know they, did, they didn't want to know or, or years ago you didn't know for sure and they just come out and say, you know, and, and everybody's waiting and expectation and say, you know, what is it? It's a boy, you know, or it's a girl and everybody's just clapping their hand. Yay. Healthy. You know, you'll get to see them just a moment. Okay? And you can't wait to see the baby. Why? Because, <laughs> all right, you, you just had some joy over it. Okay? That's called rejoice. <laughs> okay, and you're just kind of like, wow, that's that's exciting. That's, that is something that the Lord is talking about that is important to us. As we look at the Psalm 51, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It says, restore. What's that mean? It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That's good. Well, hallelujah. Now, one thing guaranteed living in this world, you are not going to be walking around all the time. Everything's joyful. Right. My cat just got ran over by a car. <laughs> You know, it's not going to be a joyful thing. Okay? And some of you are like, oh my God. You know, just me saying that. Here's, here's, here's the thing. You know, uh, we went and went that hack to her. Dog or anything like that or any, you know, there is this, 
there's times when life is just kind of like the worst things will happen and they just do. Praise God. Well, I've been serving God and, you know, uh, it should be all pie in the sky. Well, no, it's not that way. If the psalmist wrote this, if David thought this, if, okay, it's, he's had some bad days. And there were some times where the bad days just seemed like they were never going to quit because they went on for years. Yeah. Years. I mean, you're talking, you know, just 20 years of the same old bad thing. You know, here comes Saul again. He's going to try to kill me. I gotta live someplace else. He's a man without a country. And so is the men that are with him. And so, I mean, it's just constantly, you know, the other guys don't like him. They don't trust him because he's a Jew. All right? And, you know, Saul don't trust him because he's already been anointed to be the future king. Yeah. Right. He knows it. Samuel told him, was right up front with him. Told him why it was why it happened too. And it did, you know, all this and you know this whole situation. So you know, you know, we think of David with a harp, and you know, we call it a harp. It was actually a different it's a stringed instrument, but you know, not this big harp that you see these pictures of angels playing. I don't know where they get that. <laughs> it's got to be some medieval, you know, uh, connotation there. You know, probably the Byzantine era. You say, well, uh, the what era? <laughs> 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 okay. It was an error, put it that way. This is a big error in history, put it that way. Okay. All right. You do not have to study it or anything like that, but people have put up these things that are not real. Okay. And, and you know, we have this false view of, of things and everything beautiful, but, you know, here's David out there singing and there comes a lion. <laughs> All right. You know, sometimes right in the middle of your rejoicing to the Lord, the lion shows up. Ever, ever have that? Sure. If you live long enough for the Lord, guaranteed it's going to happen. All right? You say, well, I hope that never happens to you. Well, I'm sorry, my friend, it's going to. Just want to warn you ahead of time. <laughs> okay, because it's, it's coming your way. All right? And here's, here's the thing. Uh, you know, he had to change <laughs> occupations from musician, okay, to basically a soldier in just a few seconds. Why? Because, hallelujah, life happens. And if you're out in the wilderness with a bunch of sheep and there are carnivores around that will, you know, that can take advantage of that animal because that animal is not going to protect itself very well. It's, you know, it loses in all the areas of protection. Many times what happens to them is they get themselves so worked up that they fall over, they get themselves in a little divot, and what happens is they're up with their, with their legs in the air, and they can't do anything. They can't get themselves back up. They, it's impossible for them to get themselves back up.
They need help to get back up. So they can't run, they can't do anything. The only thing is, is their, their meal waiting to be ate by the predator. Okay. That's, you know, that's not joyful. You say, well, what's, you know, what's so important? Why would, why would he put himself in danger to do this? Well, he has a responsibility, and he took the responsibility seriously. Number two, it's about, how can I say, the well-being of the family. See, those sheep belong to the family. The family is provided for because of those sheep. Okay, there is wool to sell in the market. There is wool to make into various garments. There is uh, there is, uh, there is uh, actually sacrifice. There is meat. It actually is God-given currency. Okay, that's what it is. So, if you don't have this, something's going to happen and it's not good. If we let the enemy or that, that predator destroy it, you destroy not just your own well-being, but the well-being of others. So why fight it? Well, if that ain't enough reason for you, okay, then you're in the wrong business. Yeah. And so there was, there was, you know, from this voice of joy into a stance of, how can I say, grit? determination and I'm going to I'm going to kill this lion yeah. it's down there roaring it's down there and it's you know it knows you're around and you're in between it and the sheep and it's not liking that and it's pacing back and forth and it's roaring and it's doing all its little acts of, of aggression before it, it does it. How many of you would stick around? <laughs> would you stick around? situations and fear takes over. The overeating power situation, you know, really a lion is, is, is no competition for a human being. You know, no matter who they are. It's not really a competition because a lion can tear apart a person in a matter of seconds. One swipe with their claws will literally open you up. Okay? So the idea of letting them get it close enough to you to do anything is, is another thing. But for him to rush into this and see life 
will happen and will put us in some, some rough situations. But listen, my friend, if we trust God, praise God, and we believe, praise God, in His purpose. And we believe that that was God-given currency, that it needs protected with everything that we caught, that God provided it. Then listen, I'm going to fight for it. Hallelujah. I would don't know. You know, how can I say all the intricacies of how David, you know, killed that lion? But we do know that he killed not only a lion, but also a bear. Now, any of those two. If you ever been in, in the woods, I, I've been in, in the woods with a mountain lion once. Uh, up in northern Pennsylvania, up close to the New York border where I was hunting. And that is the most interesting thing you ever have walk by you. Now they don't smell that good here. Okay? It was fall on a flock of turkey. I was archery hunter, deer. And, uh, you know, there's, he's down there below me, and I'm kind of little on a ridge. And I'm looking down on the trail. And turkey are walking a deer trail, you know, and there goes, there goes the turkey, and about, Oh, about three minutes later, here comes the stealth lion. He's just walking. And I'm like, oh my God. So when I noticed that, a couple thoughts ran through my mind. Or I can bag this thing. I don't think they're going to leave on me. I'm thinking, well, that might be pretty stupid. Wounded lion. That might not be good. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be mountain lion in Pennsylvania. They were supposed to be on the other side of the border. Not this one. He didn't get the news. No. <laughs> okay. All right. It's on, on there. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I'm just a, at that time, you know, 15 year old, you know, kid. <laughs> you know, I just, <clears throat> stupid, that's what I was. <laughs> Okay, anything 15 years old in human form is stupid. Okay, especially boys. Danger does not make sense to them. Okay, for some. For some, it's just another adventure. <laughs> okay, I can take that thing. Yeah, sure you can. Okay, got my knife and bow, you know. All right. And it's probably not 
not the smartest way to think. But anyhow, already, and then when I seen him, he was just, he turned his eyes, you know, figured I wasn't even a threat. Oh, wow, I impressed him. <laughs> Off he goes just stealthily along, you know. Couldn't hear him. He just walking real stealthy, following those turkeys. And he's just intent on the last couple turkeys in that flock, you know. Now I'm sure farther down, he jumped on one of those turkeys, and I never heard it because those those. Mountain lion, they are quick. They're faster than anything you could ever want to see. Okay? And the bobcats that are smaller than them, they're the same. They're quick. They look like a really big kitty cat, but they ain't a big kitty cat. They are, they are a, they are a tussle. And they will kill you. The thing is that when we turn to the moment, Come on. oh hallelujah, things can either affect us one way or the other. It can affect us to put us in a place. And there were some instances, you know what, the bear and the lion didn't do it to David, it was family problems. It was family problems to do with David. I mean, he faced a bear, he faced a lion, you know, he, he faced a giant, you, okay, you know, took the sling and stone, poof, you know, and, and, and did all that, and, you know, and you know what he gets messed up on? Family problems. Yeah. That's right. Yep. You know, you know, his, you know, his, his wife is, you know, daughter of Saul. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you know, this, this is a messy situation. Yeah. Okay? And they're, they're out there, and, and they're in a mess, and they're in a, in a terrible time with how they are uh, trying to avoid Saul and avoid the Philistines. And, you know, one time he's leading with the Philistines. And so, you know, the Philistines were very superstitious. So at, at one point, they wanted him to go to war against the Israelites with him. And so he knew their superstition. And so he acted like a madman. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. That said, okay, you stay there. <laughs> yeah. We'll go to war with Saul. And so he avoided this crisis. He's trying. Uh, he's, he's trying to. You know, how do I maneuver through this? You know, I love Saul. <laughs> But he can't stand me. You know, I love my wife, but she, I don't know which side she's on half the time. You know what I'm saying? It hit really home. Really hard, hard home. I mean, it got so close. And I mean, this just didn't go away. It went on and on and on and on and on. And you think it would be over, and it's not over. You think, you know, you, you show Saul, listen, I could have killed you when you were at the cave. <laughs> and you think, and, and, and you know, you think that will help the situation, you know, show your ability. I mean, you, 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 you know, you've run away, you, 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 you hid, maybe 
this will help to show that you're on his side somehow and all this kind of stuff and and, and it didn't help. It only seemed to make things worse. Sometimes we, we, we try to do things we just should keep our hands out of. That's right. Let God deal with it. Right. And he'll deal with it. So well, so beautiful. It, 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 may, it may be a long time, but I want to tell you something. When you come out of it, oh, hallelujah. what we have to do. And that's what we just kind of put out there. And that's what we just kind of love the Lord and allow Him to minister to us. But there can be some joy that comes up with us. Uh, praise God. He said, restore unto me the joy of that salvation that I had. He said, listen, if I have that joy, I'm going to be able to teach sinners and and I'm going to be able to show them the way. And I'm going to be able, if I just get that joy back. Listen, my friend, there is many times just the subject of getting the joy back. Amen. Amen. Joy. Woo. Joy of salvation. You say, well, I haven't experienced the joy of that salvation. I I've never known that. You know, I, you know, I just... I, I believe God. There's God. I believe all that stuff. But, you know, that joy. What is that? It's a voice. <laughs> it's a voice. It's something. It's, it, 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 it's a voice. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, it's not quiet. It's a voice. Right. There's a voice of gladness. It's, oh. it's not quiet. It, 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 it's a voice. Okay, there's a voice of the bridegroom. That you know what? What is that? It's it, it's it's the one who's going before the bridegroom, and he is announcing the bridegroom cometh. That's exactly what they did. As they walk in into the uh, into the village where the bride is waiting, the bridegroom cometh. What happens is people flow out into the streets and there's this long procession behind the bridegroom as he comes uh, uh, with his, uh, how can I say, uh, his wealth uh, uh, to appease, praise God, and to give to the father of that girl. And he comes with that and, and they are dressed in, in all kinds of beautiful colors and and, and their garments, and they are carrying garments and all these different things uh, to give to the bride and all this. And, and they are coming in. It's a beautiful, well put together procession. There's usually music and all this. That's the voice of the bridegroom. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. That's how they did those ancient Jewish weddings. It, it was a it was a joyful thing. Many times it went on for days. Okay, you know, it, many times it was something that they rejoiced, and uh, people camped out the home, and 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 people would just keep, uh, you know, there would be bringing of food and all these different things, and they would rejoice in the Lord, and they would sing songs and music and. And all these different things were uh, performed uh, there. I, 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 it was a time of joy. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, it was a time that, that uh, you know, uh, it was a time where they could, you know, they were allowed to eat, you know, above and beyond, uh, you know, uh, it was very, in other words, there was provision made for this long before time. There was provision. See, uh, what, uh, you know, one of the things that was 
wrong uh, in uh, Jewish law that you weren't allowed to do was to go and take uh, if you were the son uh, and, and take uh, the family's uh, food and stuffs because you know uh, there was so much that had to be kept up and there had to be put away uh, okay and if you had those parties and, and, and we see in the Old Testament where there's where's one of these stories where they ended up stoning the fellow because of what he did because he you know it sounded like he was just having a party you know what was going on is something you don't understand one thing that was going against the law number two he was wasting away the provision of not just him and it was not time for it the wedding was time for it. Wow, well, Leah. Yeah. Why? Because, all right, when the grain's carried in and, there, and another harvest is being, has been planted and they're waiting for that harvest, you best be careful. Because why? Well, God really knows all. It's one of those clauses. Okay. It's not just about, okay, this. So there's a time to rejoice. You know, uh, you know I want to say something here. You know, I was talking about the lion. You say, well, Rosie's saying, man, I can't wait to get to the lion. No, you're a kook if you're that way. <laughs> I'm just going to say that just right out here right now. The Bible also says, Weeping endureth for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes. All right? All right. Actually, uh, the cometh there is an adaptation, uh, joy in the morning. All right? Okay. All right. Is that talking about physical night? No, it's not talking about physical night. What it's talking about is spiritual night. You have nights you go through where you can't see and you don't know what's around the corner. And all you hear is scary noises. All you hear is something is trying to intrude or get in. All you hear is something... That, you know, and your mind just races away that the worst is on its way. Weeping endure for the night. Joy in the morning. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Joy in the morning. I don't think that is a concept of weight. But an expectation. An expectation and that the joy is coming. I'm closing. Let's stand. I worry out. Joy comes in the morning. Restore unto me the joy. I think if we, we can uh, incorporate any prayer right now, it would be Psalms 51. If there is, you know, uh, if we can sing it, we can pray it. There has been many times uh, over the years where I have went to that song and I am before the Lord and I am just praying that. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because it's a dire situation. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And somehow, after I get through that song, there's some joy. There's some hope. The morning springs forth before the morning should spring forth. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just telling you that God can encourage us if 
we won't let him. He can fill you with the power of the Holy Ghost. And you can experience that joy that is not man-made. It's not man-made. Man can, cannot come up with a concussion that will do what the Spirit of God will do in you and erupt in you with His power and with His Spirit. Pray it if you're not there. I understand. 
Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. And he will do it. Because he is a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. If God's dealing with your heart, do not stop it.
Let's not dismiss him through the day and through till Wednesday. Praise God. Let's let's be purposeful.